Sex Education for Children. My name is Olusegun Mokuolu. Usually when there is crisis in the society, people react in various ways. When you have crises that affect children, particularly sexually, people react. So you begin to hear all kinds of postulations, theories, recommendations, suggestions, and advice. But as God's children, what should we do? Should we offer sex education to our children? What exactly is sex education? Now, I want you to understand that I am dealing with Christians. I am dealing with believers. I'm dealing with people who are born again. Because the people of the world, they have their own ways of doing things. But in the kingdom of God, we have our own way also for doing things. The people of the world may be confused, but we are never confused about this issue. Never. Now, what exactly should we do with regards to the issue of sex education? You see, usually education does something. It brings about curiosity. And curiosity brings about experimentation. And experimentation gives pleasure. And pleasure, when it is not matched with reason, it becomes difficult to stop. Somebody shared a story with me. She was just 10 years old when she saw a book on sex education. She read that and she started masturbating at the age of 10. Because you see, it creates curiosity and curiosity will lead to experimentation. And experimentation will give you pleasure. And when a child has pleasure, he does not yet have sufficient reason not to pursue that pleasure. So what should we do as God's children? In some society, they are actually offering our children sex education in the school. Why should anyone offer your child sex education? In that process, they are already teaching them about gay marriage. They are already teaching them that it is okay for a man and a man to be together. A, man, a woman and a woman to be together. Some are even teaching them that they can decide to choose their gender. That if they are a male child, they can decide to become a female child. You see, this is the problem when we allow the society to fix an obvious problem for us. Nobody has a right to train our children for us as God's children. Now, so what then should we do? Let me give you this illustration or this example. What sex education did Joseph receive? What form of sex education did Joseph receive? Not none. But she, he was able to resist the advance of Potiphar's wife. Joseph was seduced. Joseph saw a woman naked. And by the way, Joseph was a teenager. He left his father at the age of 17, 17 years old. Now, so what was it that made a 17-year-old to grow up in a foreign land and be able to say no to sexual sin and be able to say no to unrighteousness? You know, for some parents, the problem with their children started when they sent their children abroad. And those children went into country where there is liberty to sin. And those kids started engaging in sin. And you will even hear some of them trying to say, oh, it's because you've never been to America. You've never been to UK. You don't know how these things work there. It's very difficult to live right. Joseph went through such. He left a family where there is godliness and went into a country uh, where they practice idolatry. And in that country, he was able to keep himself. He would not sleep with his, with his master's wife. Why? The fear of God. The fear of God. You see, the kind of sex education that our children sincerely need is the fear of God. Many parents have abrogated their duty, their divine duty, their God-given duty to raise their children. You don't have the time. Now, you see, if you read Proverbs 22, verse 6, which most of you probably know, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's prophetic. That means that if you play your part, God will ensure that the other part is fulfilled. All you need to do is to train up the child in the way. Now, what is that way? Jesus said, I am that way. So you must train a child to know Jesus. That's the only way. 
It's not telling a child about genitals, telling a child about sexual position, reproductive organs. That won't keep any child from sin. Every single person knows this. It has never kept anybody from sin. No matter what you teach. The only thing that keeps a man from unrighteousness is the fear of God. So raise a child in the way of the law. That is your responsibility as a parent. That is what God had called you to. You think to parent is just to have sex with your wife and then you, you have children and start sending them to school? That's what many of you are doing. You've basically neglected your role as parents. And you cannot train them in that way if you are also not in that way. How do you set godly example if you are not godly? So the first thing is that you yourself must know Jesus as a parent. And when you read Malachi 2, he said, why did I make them true? He said, because I seek a godly offspring. The reason God created you, husband and wife, is because he's seeking godly offspring. Not so that you can enjoy yourself and have sex, unending sex. Not so that somebody can cook your food or wash your clothes. Not so that you can shout on somebody. He did that because he's seeking a godly offspring. But you are not investing your life in giving God that. So at best, you will just quickly go and put them in school for somebody to raise for you. And then now we are wondering why our kids turning bad. If you go to apps like Likey, like TikTok, those, those girls you see on there and those boys you see there, somebody gave birth to them. How come they are, they are so shameless that they can come and uh, show erotic dance, some of them almost showing their breasts and so on, and they don't see any shame in it. They are not even conscious that these videos could harm them in the future. Some parent raised them. Somebody gave birth to them. It is your responsibility to raise them in the way of the Lord. Now, let me read another one for you in Proverbs 19, verse 18. It says, Chasing thy child where there is hope, and let not thy soul spare his crying. Chasing the child where there is hope. There is a period to train your child. Do you know the most sad, uh, the, the saddest part of this is that that is the period parents neglect their children. You see, it said train a child. It didn't say train a teenager. You see, once a child becomes a teenager, you are done. There's nothing you can do to that child again. It will take the mercy of God to bring the child into any sort of conformity to the way of the Lord. It's a child. He said, train a child when there is hope. Chase thy son when there is hope. Proverbs 19, 18. Chase thy thy son when there is hope. When there is hope. There is a period when there is hope. There is a period when you can raise them for the Lord. If you miss it, that is all. It is when they are, uh, as a child, you teach them the word of God. You go through the Bible with them. You show them godly example. You explain things to them from biblical perspective. But as a parent, you are listening to worldly songs. You are watching all kinds of filthy things. And they see you. And then you are wondering, why are these children growing bad? You don't know those things you are watching. They, can, they come with spirit. That those children cannot resist. You don't understand it. In Ephesians 6, 4, look at what it says. And ye fathers... Provoke not your children to rot, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Provoke them not to rot. It's not just holding cane and beating them, beating them. Some of you, you have become terror to them. That's not what God is saying. He says, spare not the rod of correction. It's not the rod of anger. It is the rod of correction. It is a discipline with an intent to make that child to become Christ-like. That's what the Lord is saying. Look at what he's saying to you fathers. He said, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. This instruction is specifically to fathers. Many fathers have missed it. You are watching football from weekend to weekend. You have no time to train them in the admonition of the Lord. You are not investing in prayer. You are not taking them along to godly meetings. You are not sharing the word of God to them. Explaining life to them from a Christ perspective. You are not doing all of that. And then now you are saying, oh, it's sex education. And that sex education, you are expecting one teacher who has no allegiance to your child to be the one to help you raise your child. Somebody said, well, should we not tell our children that they should not touch their breasts, they should not touch their uh, private part and so That is not sex education. Is that not a normal thing? You are a child is you tell a child that is going to school, don't steal, don't fight anybody, don't let anybody touch you. That's a normal training. That is not sex education. It's, it's just a normal thing. You should you should train a child to understand. It's just a normal thing. But ultimately, what we keep a child is the knowledge of God. What we keep a child is the fear of God. 
are you raising those children in the fear of God? And when you come back home, you just press phone, press phone, press phone, press phone. You forgot you have an assignment. So you thought it is just sleeping with your wife and having and having children. That's why many of you are having children. Because you really don't know what it takes to raise a child. So you just keep having them, keep having them. You come back home, you just go and sit somewhere and, and, and press phone and press phone and press phone. Time is going. They will soon get out of that child age. He said, he said, chastise them, discipline them. When there is hope, there is a you you it's not something you can do forever. There is a limited time which you can train a child to grow. A limited time. You come back from work, you must go to somewhere to go and drink, to go and drink pepper soup. Is that the person that will raise a child for Jesus? Is that how to raise a child for Jesus? Or you will beat your wife. You will be beating your wife. Is that how to raise a child for Jesus? Then you are wondering why these kids are turning out to be what they are turning out to be in the society. How, how did you want them to, to, to come, turn out right? A child is a blank page. It's whatever you write there. If not for the mercy of God, some of our children will have become will have gone completely a wire. Because we are not making that investment. You are working to pay school fees. You are not raising them for the Lord. You are not raising them for eternity. Of what use is a child that becomes a doctor only to end up in the lake of fire? Of what use is that? Some of you are even watching pornography. How can you then be have the courage to teach your child and say pornography is wrong? How? Some of you are cheating. You are you are into adultery. How can you then tell the child that this is wrong? You are now talking about sex education. Sex education. What is sex education? Christ education. Christ education. That is what they need. Christ education. Raise them in the admonition of the Lord. It will not fail. The word of God cannot fail. It says if you train a child in the way that child should go, when that child is old, he will not depart from it. Soak them in prayers. Soak them in prayers. When Peter was going to fall, Jesus said, Peter, devil has planned to have you, but I have prayed for you. That's a father. That's your role as a father. You must hold that child up in the place of prayer. Even when you look as if the child is misbehaving, see, the child will come back. Because you have tied that child down with prayer. God gave you that child for a reason. You became the vehicle for that child to come to this world for a reason. Don't fail God. What we need is Christ education, not sex education. What kept Joseph from Potiphar's wife was not sex education. It was Christ education. I pray God will give you wisdom in the name of Jesus. My name is Olusha Gumokolu. God bless you.